Hi, I'm Connor Sullivan, and this is the Brett Beard Show with Denham Springs High School Football Coach Brett Beard. Thank you for having me on today. Yes, sir. So, uh, week three, 0 and 3. Yeah, I mean, it's not the way you wanted to start. I mean, uh, nobody does, but um, there's reasons I'm here, and this program was not in a in a state to where uh, you know, our successes are necessarily counted as wins and losses on the scoreboard. I, I think we got to start by getting some of these little battles, these little victories, and, uh, you know, c to continue to see growth. I mean, that's one thing we can say. We're, we're seeing growth every week, so I am pleased with that. Now, granted, we, wanna, we want that quick satisfaction. We want, the, uh, we want those wins, and, uh, you know, it's going to happen. There's going to be a turn that comes here uh, hopefully very soon and it uh, gives us a chance to be, be a lot more competitive on Friday night. Let's get into the highlights, Coach. You have the Denham Springs High School Yellow Jackets taking the field for the first time since preseason with the scrimmage versus Woodlawn. First home game against Westgate. Tigers ball first, quarterback number nine, Brennan Landry. Quick pass, number six, Danny Lewis for the first down, deep in Jacket territory. A few plays later, it's number nine Landry, passing number three, Dedrick Lalo on two point conversion on the screen for the touchdown. Two point conversion was good, 8-0 Westgate. What happened here, coach? Oh, they just made a play. Yeah, you know, they, they're able to get our edge. We, uh, we, we had a little breakdown in coverage. They were able to get the edge and score. Yes, sir, you have Reese Mooney as debut as a starter into Westgate, number three Mooney, rolling left, finds number seven, Micah Harrison, he's popped to the left, ball jar loose, number eight, Daniel Heron on of Westgate recovers, fumble, jacket territory. Fourth down, direct stop number 12, Jaquelin Allen, who gets the first down, gets the edge, number 27, Brain Bourgeois on the tackle. A few plays later, number nine, Landry's pass is intercepted by number one, Troy Goldman with the one hand. Tell, me, tell us about that play, Coach. Uh, I mean, great play. You know, big time players are supposed to make big time plays in big time games. Uh, you know, obviously, the first week as a DB, he made a big play with the, you can see all, with the cast and uh, clubbed up. But, you know, that's what you gotta do. You know, we gotta start making more plays and creating some excitement and some energy on our football program. Yes, sir, of course. <clears throat> Yeah, number three, Mooney, handoff to number five, Ray McNeely, for a nice run. He had a uh, he had quite a game, coach. Yes, he did. Yeah, Jackets near player. midfield. Number three, Mooney, handoff to number four, Kevin Kelly, gets carries for a gain. Second quarter now. Jackets driving. Number three, Mooney's pass is complete. To number two, 80, 82 Miles Edwards, fine for yards, but the ball is actually knocked loose and recovered by number 44, Tayshawn Fusa. Let's get ball. Number nine, Landry, handoff to number five, Kayvon Sofas, number one, Troy Goldman, with a nice tackle, the one hand. Westgate driving, number five, Sofas, with a big run to get inside the red zone. Uh, what happened here, coach? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're not we're not getting our gap. We're not doing assignment football. We're not playing assignment football. And uh, as you can see, that we, we have some breaks in the wall. And, uh, you know, he's able to get through there. That's, uh, that's, that's on us, and we gotta get it cleaned up. Yes, sir, of course. Uh, now you have the Wildcat offense. Direct step number six, Lewis. He, he got the ball quite a bit. Run straight ahead for the touchdown. 16 0 Westgate. You have a uh, Denim Springs student section. Getting hype. One of the best student sections in the state. Jackets punting. Number three, Ladele, with the 92 yard punt return. He uh, breaks a tackle, makes defenders miss. Just. Uh, poor effort. Poor effort from that team across the board. Uh, you got a job to do, you got a lane to stay in, you got to close with the football. It's, uh, it's a job that obviously is, uh, we got to find guys that, that have the pride to get it done. And uh, that's a big time play uh, that that player made. And those, those, are the, those are the plays that can, that can hurt you. I mean, those are big momentum plays. You can see we're right there. We don't break down. We do nothing we're taught to do. We're on the ground. We don't close to the, uh, to the ball like we're supposed to. Our lanes are, uh, I mean, there's, there's nothing there that, that we're teaching to do. It's, gotta, it's a job that's got to get done. Yes, sir. You have Reese and John McDowell. And Tigers ball again. Number nine, Landry. On the quarterback keeper for a very big gain, you have uh, number one, Troy Goldman, with the tackle. A few plays later, number nine Landry, touchdown pass. You see number six, Lewis, 
for the touchdown, nothing really can do there. 29 nothing Westgate, halftime. Just explain that play, coach. Yeah, I thought number six wanted more. Yes, sir. He's a yeah. pretty big target. Yeah, you, we could we could go with size, but uh, you know you got to fight right there. If, instead of giving up a touchdown, why don't you just uh, have, get the penalty, do something different? Is there a jackets ball number five McNeely? It's a nice carry. Uh, Denham pushing deep Westgate territory. You have a uh, field goal attempt by Cameron Beal. It's actually no good. Field goal is missed right off the uprights. So uh, now you have uh, Reese Mooney as his debut again. Now you have uh, Tigers driving again, number nine, Landry. Touchdown pass, number 13, Jordan. Uh, just say, what happened there, coach? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a that's a mismatch that they were able to find, which is, uh, I mean, that, that's part of it. You know, we we got to do a good job on the edge. We got to help get to that quarterback and make him a lot more uncomfortable with what he was, and uh, hopefully take some time away from these guys having to cover. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, now you have number three, Reese Mooney. Actually sacked by number 32, Henry Beignet. Yeah, nice play by him. Fourth quarter, Westgate ball. You have number nine, Landry, on the keeper. He has a very big run, making defenders miss. Actually, at number 27, Brain Bourgeois on the tackle. Uh, now you have fourth down, number nine, Landry's pass. Short of the marker, stopped by number one, Troy Goldman, you see him. He had a good game. Uh, turnover on downs, Jackets ball. Yeah, Denham Springs High School cheerleader, senior night. Snap goes over Reese Mooney's head, actually. Uh, Cameron Kelly dives on the ball, it's not enough. Covered in the end zone. Now, Westgate ball, it's a touchdown. 43 none Tigers at this point. Losing momentum. Now you have uh, Jackets ball, number three, Reese Mooney for the screen pass on the Gets the edge, number seven, Micah Harrison for a very big gain. Jackets in Westgate territory. At number three, Reese Mooney makes a mistake. Pass intercepted. Great play by number two, Derek Williams. Uh, driving down the field. Late fourth now, Jackets ball. Number three, Reese Mooney hand off to number five. Ray McNeely for the nice, getting the red zone, deep in the red zone. Nice run. And then now you have uh, last minute, number three quarterback, Reese Mooney on the quarterback keeper for the easy touchdown. Gets the edge, Jackets on the board. Final score, Westgate 43, Denham seven. So, uh, talk about that coach, Reese Mooney, he had a, uh, how, how do you play? Uh, I was pleased. I mean, you, you got the young buck getting his first career start as a sophomore in 5A football against a, uh, a big-time opponent in Westgate who I think was uh, very physical, very athletic, uh, very talented, and a lot of fun to watch, a lot of fun to game plan for. Uh, I thought he handled himself quite well. You know, you, you got to expect some mistakes to be made as a, when, a rookie, when a rookie gets a start, but just his mentality, his, uh, his attitude was something we were able to kind of feed off of. He, he never really got down. He stayed pretty even keel, and, uh, you know, I, I, like the, I like the way he had you know he handled himself, and uh, I look for big things to continue as that kid grows and matures. And uh, you know it was a, it was a lot of fun to watch a rookie go out and handle himself the way he did. And so of course, uh, <coughs> senior play has been a big deal for the Yellow Jackets this year with leadership and everything. How much of an impact do you think the seniors have on this football team? <laughs> Well, I mean, they have a huge impact. You know, uh, you, if you want the, the quick, instant gratification, your seniors have got to, uh, you, know, you know, they're kind of the grown men of the program. So, I mean, they, they, they have to do things different than the uh, juniors and sophomores. And, and you know, right now, um, with the way they've been wired and the things they've been through in their career at Denham Springs, you know, they're, they're, they're a little different. You know, the, the only thing that, that's tough about this situation is I wish I had more time with those guys. You know, I wish I had a, a true off season with them. I wish I had years with them because they got some, they got some, great, some great young men in that group, uh, you know, really all you can do is challenge them. You, you know, don't get caught up in the past and put all that crap in the rearview mirror and keep going forward and keep fighting and keep and keep playing. You know, play the game the right way. You know, teach these young kids to be different. Don't let them go through what they've been through. And uh, if we can continue to grow them and, uh, you, you know, some of them want to step up and, and, and be leaders and lead this program, you know, those decisions got to be made uh, at school. Those decisions got to be made away from school. You know, there's a lot of things that go into uh, changing a football program and you year one with your senior group, that makes it tricky. 
uh, because you, you know you don't want to just push those guys aside. You want to give them every opportunity. And like I said, the quick fix are those guys being able to compete because they're the 17, 18 year old grown men in the in the group. Um, so we just need them to start getting it done, have a little more pride in the work they're putting in, and you know they gotta they gotta get tired of uh, feeling the way they feel, uh, you know, with the history they've been through. Of course, uh, offense played uh, good, but they had three fumbles in the first half. Like, how does that change with the momentum, getting in the red zone, just not executing? Yeah, well, I mean, it goes back to what we've kind of been dealing with. You, you know, we're constantly playing behind the chains, behind the eight ball, it feels like. You know, we uh, we get a little momentum, and we can't capitalize on it. Uh, I thought we kind of found a little bit of who we could become last weekend. I thought we got big in times with some big formations. I thought we, we ran the football well. I thought we sustained drives. And, and you got to finish. You, you, you know, you look at the, the situation right there. We're going in to score where we fumble, and it's 8 nothing. You go in, you score, you kick the PAT. It's eight seven. Well, now the the pressure is different. The feel is different. You know, we got the momentum, and instead of being down eight, giving a ball back to them, we're down one with the momentum uh, to kind of spark you know our defense and uh, kind of give them some life. You know, that's just one thing where we are not um, doing a very good job of of taking our momentum and using it in our favor. You know, that some of us just gonna some of us growing pain. Some of us just going through uh, just going through what we're going through to get this program to the elite level we're trying to build. Yeah, of course. Uh, speaking of defense, defensive changes. You actually had a uh, freshman corner, Mason Vrie starting. You had Troy Goldman at corner, and you had Mason Edwards at safety. Uh, tell us about that, Coach. Well, I mean, as coaches, you do everything you can. I mean, uh, you ask you, you guys, you kids, to work at a level that you've never worked before. It's our job as coaches to try to figure out where the pieces fall to put us, uh, you know, the best product on the field to give us a chance to win and be successful. Because ultimately, you know, whether we like it or not, that's how we're judged, whether I agree or disagree. Uh, as long as I'm seeing growth, especially early in a uh, program change. Um, you know, everybody wants that instant gratification, and uh, they can go to Twitter for all that if they want to, but I'm seeing some growth. I'm seeing some guys get better, but uh, it's our job to figure out who can play here and who wants to play here. You know, sometimes some of your best football players don't really want to play football. we got to find guys that want to play. Um, I love the youth in uh, Varese uh, as a freshman who, uh, who's got that twinkle in his eye. He's not scared to go, go against anybody. Yeah, you know, Troy Goldman, who uh, we might not ever see as a as a DB if he doesn't get hurt and can't catch a football with his cast, though we see that he can catch. So he's going to be able to go back and probably run some vertical routes for us and give us that deep threat offensively. But I thought he played a really physical game and gave us a, gave us a chance and uh, you know he showed that he wanted to play. So we feel like he's a guy that can go in the box and give us that long athlete that can uh, cover across the field and, and he will obviously get physical, which sometimes those are the question marks with some guys, especially on the D, on the back end. So, uh, you know, the changes we're making is only trying to fit what we're asking you to do so we can be successful. Of course. Uh, run game, O-line, running backs had a really good game. Ray McNeely with over 100 rushing yards, Cam Kelly with 60, and Reese Mooney with 21 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll back up and start with the quarterback. You know, it was good to see him finally pull the ball and kind of show that we we are a, a true read offense. You know, it was good to see them make those those reads. And you can see when when read correctly, you got a chance to to pick up some yardage, which I thought he did. Uh, you know, and, and make sure that other schools are preparing for what we have in our arsenal. So uh, I was really pleased with that. Uh, you know, our backs we know are special. They're young and pups, but they're going to be just fine. But realistically, they go nowhere without the offensive line. And that, that is the one group I have, I have to say that if you go back and watch week one, week two, week three, you can see the growth. They're getting more and more comfortable with each other. Their, uh, you know, their communication, their style of play is starting to fit together a lot better. And uh, with that, you know, we're, you can see our confidence grow in the trenches, which Ultimately, if you want to win a state championship, you got to win in the trenches. And uh, I'm really pleased to see their growth. Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about special teams. You had the midfield goal early in the game, and you also had a punt return for a touchdown. Just how does that impact the game? Well, I mean, those are big momentum swings. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, they're, they're, the reason they're called special teams is because you got to be special to play them. Uh, it's either a guy that may be a backup that's looking to get his first opportunity to play varsity or maybe a guy that's got to play every snap and he's still got to go play special teams. Uh, they have to be special. I think they need to treat it that way. Uh, I don't know that we're treating it that way. I think sometimes, you, you know, you look at that as a possible break or a chance to get some young guy a snap, but ultimately you're on those teams because we want you to be special. We want you to be a special player and uh, you got to go make special plays. You know, it's not easy to run downfield, uh, make two or three guys miss and make a tackle in open space. You have to be special, and you got to want to be special. Um, 
there's no doubt we've had some breakdown in our special teams already that has got to be cleaned up. The job's got to get done. And, uh, you know, we're not going to make a whole lot of wholesale changes there. We, uh, we're just going to keep putting pressure on guys to get it done. Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about next week. You host Central for the district opener. Let's talk about that uh, Denham Central rivalry. Yeah, you, you know, I've always heard all, a lot about it. I'm excited to be on uh, to be on this side of it, uh, to be in it. Uh, you know, with the COVID year, we probably won't get the full effect of the of the real rivalry atmosphere. And the only other time I saw it was two or three years ago when they were at Central in the rain. So the, once again, the atmosphere wasn't near what it's probably been in the past. Um, but I think it, I, I honestly believe this is two big time programs going against each other for a long time and uh, have created such an amazing rivalry because it is, uh, you know, two big time programs that do it right. And uh, it's our job to go out and, you know, play our game and uh, put Denham Springs football back on the map. Yes, sir. So uh, this is the district opener home. What's the importance of home games? Uh, I mean, I guess it's an opportunity to play at home. You don't have to travel. You know, you don't have to add that aspect to travel. Uh, you know, some people feed off of the home game atmosphere. Me, personally, I, I'll play anywhere with green grass and white lines. I mean, that's the mentality you got to take into it. Uh, there's no doubt it's a lot of fun being at home because it's, you know, maybe more so new to me because I have never, I've never been here and been that close to the stands and getting to learn the stuff I'm now able to learn. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, I love Denham Springs football, and I'm willing to go play anywhere and everywhere. Uh, and that's what's, uh, you know, that's, that's that's part of it, man. You work so hard to have these opportunities. We're going to take advantage of them wherever we play. Yes, sir. So, uh, what changes can we be looking forward to going into Week Four? Well, I mean, we're going to continue to get better. You, you know, I, I know everybody's looking for that that first big time victory. That first, uh, you know, heck, right now we're just looking for an opportunity to get in the fourth quarter with a chance to win a football game. But uh, like I said, there is growth, and uh, eventually the growth is going to turn into a light bulb going off. And when it does, you're going to see a brand of Denver Springs football that is uh, that's arriving. And you know that's that's really where we're at. So this week, Friday, at home Central for the district opener at seven o'clock. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm Connor Sullivan, and this is the Bird Beard Show. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir.